Okay, in this video, I'm going to build a Micro 8088. Uh, the Micro 8088 is another one of uh, Sergei Kisilev's designs. Um, you've probably seen a few of my previous videos. I've built some of, of Sergei's stuff. Um, the XI8088, as well as the Compact Flash card and the VGA card and other cards that went with it. Um, the Zeta 2, things like that. But his his latest is this uh, Micro 8088. And what this is, it's, it's another um, 8088 CPU board. You can use a V20 chip on it if you want. Uh, but rather than having all that discrete logic that the uh, XI8088 has, it's going to use this big uh, package here that's going to have a chipset that's going to implement DMA controller, interrupt controller, uh, timer chip, you know, all that junk is going to be in that chip. It's going to vastly simplify the design from what the XI8088 had. So let's uh, go ahead and build this board and then I will compare it um, to my XI8088 and see how it works. I have finished soldering all of the components to the Micro 8088 board. This includes all of the sockets, the bypass capacitors, uh, SIP resistors, and just about everything else that goes on it. Haven't plugged in the uh, chips into the sockets yet. It's pretty much standard according to the uh, build instructions. The only wonky thing here is that I soldered a bunch of 4.7K resistors together because I didn't happen to have a 4.7K uh, by 10 SIP resistor on hand. It's time to install some ICs now. Here is the Micro 8088 fully completed. Um, I have everything installed except the 8087. I've never used a math coprocessor before so I don't have one installed now. I did go with a NEC V20. Um, for the CPU, here you can see the big uh, chip for the chipset. Um, over here we have the two memory chips, uh, 512K each. Uh, the flash ROM, there's a speaker. I usually leave the tape over the speaker because otherwise it's noisy and annoying. Um, and over here is the PS2 connector for your keyboard. There's a reset switch, there's a power um, light. Let's uh, plug it in and see how it goes. So this is uh, the chassis I traditionally have my XI-88 installed, it would be installed here. I've removed it, uh, we'll install the Micro 8088 in its place. Now we're ready to boot up. I'm going to turn on the power. Here is uh, the BIOS uh, checking the RAM. And now we're booting off of Compact Flash. So let's uh, try going in to check it. And we'll do a CPU benchmark and look at the CPU. Uh, so let's do uh, the benchmark, the CPU, it's starting to run, so it has auto-detected 4.7 megahertz uh, NEC V20, that's just as it should be. Let's let it do its benchmark. And it's slightly faster than uh, PCXT because this is a V20 chip, not an 8088 chip. Um, I believe some of the instructions take fewer cycles. Uh, now here is where I would normally switch it into turbo mode. Um, this does not have a hardware turbo switch. It does have a software um, turbo switch where you could hit control alt and plus to go into turbo. But my keyboard doesn't have a numeric keypad. Um, so I'm going to do it slightly more uh, manually intensive way uh, using uh, outputting to a port on the chipset. So we're going to run DOS debug. Now if we write to port 63 and we write in 81, that should switch it to 9.54 megahertz. 
Now let's try check it. Does it feel any faster? Yeah, that's faster. Uh, benchmarks. Main system. Detected 9.55 megahertz V20. And it is 2.43 times faster than a PC XT. That's about what we expect, so that's that's cool. Uh, turbo mode's working well. Um, let's try a memory test. Okay, the memory test passed. That's good. So let's... KQIV. Let's see, I should have King's Quest 4 on here someplace. Well, here's King's Quest 1. What about KQ1.com? Yep, and here we are moving King Graham around. Up. Oh, that was unfortunate. Uh, restart game. There, we safely passed those alligators. And here we are in the throne room. I think that's a pretty decent job of putting this thing through its paces. Um, Micro 8088, a success. Okay, let's compare uh, the Micro 8088 down here at the bottom to the XI 8088 here on the top. Uh, these are both Sergei Kisilev's designs. I built both of these and used them in my uh, retro computer builds. Um, the first one I built was the XI-8088 that was uh, a year or two ago. Uh, the Micro-8088 is the one I just built um, this month. Um, you'll see the Micro-8088 is much smaller. That's because a lot of the various separate vintage chips that you'll find up here, things like uh, interrupt controllers, timer chips, DMA, it's all been combined into this one large chipset chip. Um, along with that came lots of various little support glue logic also got combined into that. Much simpler design, a lot less soldering in my opinion, uh, somewhat more stable just because of the, the fewer variations in parts that you can get, you know, more predictable performance. Um, but I do think you lose some flexibility. So the XI-8088, it does have a little bit better ability, I think, to play around with clock speeds and stuff. Um, you've got jumpers for selecting wait states on, on I.O. and memory. Um, the ability to easily pull out oscillators and put in different ones. Hardware turbo switch. All of those things are kind of nice and, and has let me overclock the XI-8088 a bit. Um, it feels faster. Um, it also has a real-time clock. Kind of like the real-time clock because um, in my uh, retro computer I actually run a Nixie tube clock. It's nice to have the real-time clock feature. A couple of other things to quickly mention about uh, the Micro 8088. It does have a data buffer attached to the uh, memory chips. 
uh, rather than putting the two memory chips directly on the IS-8 bus, they're behind a buffer. I found uh, in my experimentation with the XI-8088 that uh, putting the memory behind a buffer did improve uh, stability, so I'm glad to see that uh, buffering is present on the Micro 8088, and it does also have pull-ups on the uh, data bus, and that's another thing I found when experimenting with um, some bus termination boards that pull-ups on the data bus uh, did help improve stability in my retro computer build, so that's another feature that I'm glad um, is supported on the Micro 8088 and I think it does um, lead to enhanced uh, stability. So deciding between the two, um, I think it just comes down to whether you want something that's simpler and stabler or something that's, you know, you can experiment more with. And I think both of them have their place. Um, I'm gonna try them both out and see which one I end up like. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.